Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about typing again in Python. In particular, we're going to be talking about distributing typed code such that other people can consume your library and use those type annotations there. Um, and let's jump into it. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about, uh, in particular, PEP 561. This is the PEP which uh, talked about how type checkers should pick up type information from packages that are distributed. Um, and this is actually written by one of the viewers of the channel, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, Ethan works on, on MyPy. Uh, but anyway, we're, I'm going to talk about just kind of the basics of this. Uh, there's a lot more details in this PEP, so if you want to read it, you know, look up PEP 50, 561. Uh, for this, I'm going to show you how to take a package that already has type information and make those types available uh, when you install it. And for that... I think the only one that kind of acts in a library capacity is uh, that I that I maintain is all repos. Um, it has a few internal parts that you know are, are typed, and a consumer might want to look at them. Um, I'm actually not distributing this as a typed stub at the at the moment, so I'm going to show you how I would update it to do that. Um, and you'll, if we look at our code, if we look at all repos config, for instance. You'll see that you know I'm using types here. All of these, all of these APIs are already typed. Um, I set up that CFG. In fact, you know, requires that I have types everywhere. Um, but I might want to distribute this library such that others can consume these types and you have better type checking on their code. And the way that you do that is you indicate a package is typed by adding a py.typed file into the root, uh, you know, package. And when I say package here, I mean a thing that contains init.py. Uh, note that distributing types for single file uh, Python packages. So I really like single file packages, but it's it's just not supported. There's no there's no current way to distribute uh, you know inline code annotations for those types of libraries. Uh, but anyway, if you have a package, so the package here, the top of the package is all repos. So what you do is you add a py.typed file into that. So I'm going to do touch all repos slash py.typed. And this file is just empty, doesn't need to contain any contents. It is a marker file. Uh, we also need to make sure that this file is both distributed and installed. Um, I did a video on package data, so I will link that in the description, but we're gonna add, we're gonna essentially add this to package data. And I don't remember how to do it in setup.cfg, but I remember how to do it in setup.py. And uh, I'm actually just gonna use setup.py upgrade to put it in the right place. So the way you do this is package data equals a mapping from package names. So all repos is the package name to a list of uh, file globs and pi.typed. I don't know why I typed pi test there. That was uh, an interesting one. Uh, so this is how you add it to setup.py. And if we use, uh, yes, we have been activate. If we do pip install uh, ba, 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 setup pi upgrade, then we run setup pi upgrade dot. And we'll see. Yeah, so it adds this options dot package data. Why did I put it there? That's weird. Oh, I know why, because then it's relying on setup CFG format to put it in the right place. No setup CFG format in, in this repository. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, you know, this this is how you do it in uh, <laughs> in setup.cfg. I would reorder it, but I don't, I don't really particularly care. Um, but yeah, once you have this, you can, you know, build your package and distribute it. So if we did Python and setup.py s dist be this wheel. And we oops, cd dist, you'll see that tar dash dash list dash uh, all repos.tar.gz, you'll see that we have right here. Uh, you'll see that it distributes the pi.typed file, and this is what my pi and other type checkers will pick up on. Um, also, if we do unzip l startup wheel, you'll see that in the wheel. Where is it? Did that... Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, you'll see that that pi.typed file also gets uh, installed as well. But anyway, that's how you mark a package that already has inline types as being able to be typed. Uh, now you might ask, well, how do I distribute, you know, pi i stubs instead? And the way you would do that is um, either add the pi i stubs alongside your files and include those as package data. So for instance, if I did like all repos slash, I don't know, utilfile, 
uh, repos slash util. Yeah, we have a few functions in here. Um, so let's say that we had um, all repos slash util dot pi i, and we can paste this in here. Um, and just we're looking for just stubs here, so we would get rid of the implementation. And so maybe you know you would take your pi i file like so. Am I missing anything? I'm missing tuple, tuple, and list. So you take your pi i file like this and distribute it directly in your package. So this this matches the same name as the pi file, uh, but my pi will pick this file preferentially. And you need to add this to package data. So similar to what we did before, uh, you would add you know star dot pi i here, and that'll cause those pi i files to be included and distributed with your package. Um, we list this again, you'll see we get util.py here. And if we do with the zip as well, it unordered, uh, it's ordered differently. You'll see that we get we get the stub file distributed. So that's how you can distribute stub files. Um, and I did a video on stub, so I will link that in the description as well. Um, but sometimes you might not want to do that, or sometimes the maintainer is like, ah, oh, type checkers are dumb, I'm not gonna blah, blah, blah. Um, so what you can actually do is distribute a separate package that includes just stubs. So you don't necessarily have to add types directly to the code. And the convention for that is laid out in this um, in this pep here as well. And this is referred to as stubs only packages. And uh, the convention is to name a package dash stubs and mypy will pick this up directly. Note that this is an illegal package name. So, um, you don't have to worry about it being imported. Um, and so, you know, if I were to do that for all repos, what I would do is, you know, make their uh, all repos dash stubs and make their, and then I would, you know, copy uh, that stubs file, uh, util.py i to all repos dash stubs and touch all repos stubs. Um, I think you need init in here as well, uh, and init.py. And then in your setup.py, you would have, you know, from setup tools, import setup, you have setup packages equals all repos dash stubs. Uh, note that this dash makes it so it's not possible to import with the import statement. So that's, that's why it's differentiated here. And mypy will pick up on this directly. Um, and of course you would name your package, probably name equals all, all repo stubs and version equals whatever. Uh, the pep also recommends that you do an install requires. Install requires equals all repos greater than or equal to whatever. Uh, this is optional though, so you don't necessarily need to do this. Um, I actually find it's often better to leave it out because <laughs> then you don't install a bunch of you know unnecessary packages here. Um, but you know, the 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 pep recommends it. So if you're gonna follow the pep to a T, you would add that install requires there. Um, and of course, you could write this with declarative metadata. I'm not going to show how to upgrade that again. Uh, but yeah, that's how you distribute um, stubs or not stubs types with, with packaging in Python. Um, if you have a single file package, uh, your only option is to convert it into you know something that has an init.py. A little bit unfortunate, but uh, there wasn't there wasn't something that was just distutils compatible that, that worked with that, although... Maybe we'll revisit it now that, you know, distutils is dying and setup tools is being the de facto way to install stuff. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.